you been wondering if Leonardo AI's image guidance tools are worth the investment? Or perhaps you're struggling to understand how to make the most of these powerful features. You've come to the right place. Today we're diving deep into Leonardo AI's image guidance tools to show you exactly how they can transform your digital art and creative projects. We'll break down each of these image guidance tools with step-by-step -step tutorials and practical examples to help you unlock the full potential of your creativity. Stick around to the end to learn all about one of the most useful new tools for content creation. Let's get started. First, we'll cover one of the most popular tools, Image to Image Guidance. This tool transforms an existing image into a new one while preserving the core elements of the original. It's best for tasks that require a high level of control over the final output, such as refining details or enhancing specific features of an image where you already have a strong idea of what you want to create. It will work best with images that have clear and distinct features that you wish to retain in the new image. It allows for precise adjustments and can be combined with other guidance tools for more complex transformations. To use it, first select a reference image you want to use an image that has clear elements that you want to keep in the design with aspects that you can change too. Let's start with this derelict ship. I think it needs a paint job. It did a great job keeping the original tone and composition of the image while adding a new coat of paint, but the paint doesn't look too new. It fits in well with the theme of an abandoned ship. Okay, let's try another example. How about this pretty woman? She needs a more interesting background. Interesting. I don't really like what it's done with the dress though. And what's with this fourth image? This is a good time to check the guidance strength. I'm going to adjust it up a little, so the AI sticks more to my guidance image. There we go, that's more like it. The AI still took some artistic liberties, like with her hair, but the background is also what I asked for. Alright, let's move on to style reference. The style reference tool generates images that borrow aesthetic qualities from a reference image. This tool is best used for tasks where you want to maintain a specific style or artistic feel in your generated image. You can select up to four different images as style references and adjust the weight of each for an extremely fine-tuned style. You can also use style reference along with other image guidance tools, except for image to image. Also, Leonardo recommends using an SDXL model for generation for best results so make sure to switch your model under Advanced Settings if you want to use SDXL instead of Lightning or Phoenix models. The best types of images to use as guidance for this tool are those with a distinct and clear style. Avoid images with unwanted characteristics such as specific facial features unless you are prepared to adjust the strength or prompt weight to counteract these effects. First we need a reference image. I've got something highly stylized here that we can use. I'm using a random prompt for this one because the AI should be able to stylize whatever we give it. The prompt is for a time-warped, enchanted, bioluminescent creature, which should mesh well with this psychedelic, colorful style. Remember to change the model under Advanced Options to SDXL for best results. I'm also going to set this to a low contrast since my style reference image is very bright. Let's see how it does. Pretty cool. I think this is a great match with the style we referenced, while still giving us the image that we prompted it to. Alright, let's generate a control image to see just how much the AI used the style reference. Yeah, that's a lot different, and you can really see the impact that the style reference had. Some of that is the change from Leonardo Lightning to Stable Diffusion XL but the style is completely different regardless. Neat. Another cool thing we can do is stack style references. This retro diner will work. Again, our random prompt should work because we're only pulling the style from our reference images, not the content. If you want to change the strength, 
your changes will apply to all reference images. I can't set one to low and another to high, but I can adjust how much weight each style gets. Well, that's pretty cool. You can see the influence of both styles in the results. The color palette draws from the first reference, clearly, with the retro style and space aspects filtering in from the second reference. But what's really cool is that it still generated what we prompted it to, which was completely different from anything our reference images had in them. I forgot to change back to SDXL, so let's do that quickly to see how much of a difference it makes. A pretty big difference, it turns out, but still consistent with what we should expect with the options we chose. As you can see, style reference can be an extremely powerful tool for keeping a cohesive style among many different image subjects and generations. While it's easy enough to produce similar styles among different image generations by using fine-tuned models and elements, the ability to blend styles in this way to create your own unique signature style and maintain that style across multiple images is really impressive. All right, moving on to content reference. Content reference generates images by referencing the content of a reference image, focusing on general shapes and structure. This tool is ideal for tasks where the composition and content layout are crucial. Content reference works well when combined with other modes such as style reference or depth to image to produce images with similar content, but in a different style. This is another tool that recommends using the SDXL model versus Lightning. The best guidance images for this tool are those that have a clear and well-defined structure. Describing what you want to see in the prompt is important for achieving the best results. This is where random prompting will not work, so let's see what we can do. We want an image with a clear structure or objects. This tower in the middle of nowhere is pretty clear. We can change it into something completely different, like an office building. Don't forget to switch to SDXL in Advanced Options. I'm changing the preset style to Moody to try and keep with the theme of the reference image. The AI won't be looking at the mood or style of the reference image, just the content. And there we have it, exactly what we asked for, but with the same placement and perspective as the reference image. Cool. How about another example? A sorcerer's tower rises from the town. Okay, wow, that's bright. Let's switch back to the lightning base model. There we go, much better. The AI was able to bring a fantasy element into the design based on the prompt, but using the composition correctly of the very industrial reference image. Another cool thing we can do is combine image guidance tools. How about this diner for content reference? and I found a sci-fi colorful tower image for a style reference. Pretty interesting. It's definitely combining the two concepts with the colors from the style represented well, but the content of the prompt and image. I'm adjusting the guidance strengths to see if I can get a more cohesive image. Yes, these images are much less wonky. Pretty cool. Moving on, Depth to Image uses depth information to enhance the three-dimensional aspects of an image. This tool is ideal for tasks that require a realistic sense of space and depth, allowing you to emphasize specific objects in the foreground or integrate elements into the background seamlessly. This is particularly useful for landscape images where background elements like mountains should appear distant, or for portraits, where the subject needs to stand out against a blurred background. The best guidance images for this tool are those with distinct foreground and background elements. I haven't really gotten a full grasp of this tool yet, but I'll try and show you some tricks. First, we need to find an image with a strong foreground and background. I found this cat prompt that should work, since the kittens are a clear foreground against the receding street in the background. I want to change the background to a tropical island. 
This first result isn't good, but that's probably because the guidance strength is set to 1. The AI thinks I want the exact same image, so I'm going to lower this down and see how that works. There we go. Much better. Although there's not really an island in the background, the cats are clearly on a tropical island. Not too bad. One thing I have noticed though is that the tool doesn't do well changing the foreground. Let's move on. Edge to Image is effective at replicating the composition of an image while changing its style and theme. This tool is ideal for rendering or restyling existing line art images. For best results, use this tool with images that have clear and distinct edges. Think of it as a way to change the style of specific elements in an image. Let's give it a try. I want an image with clear objects in it. I'm not sure this stone artifact is clear enough, but let's try. I want to change the style and context, but not the content of the image. So let's try and turn it into a sci-fi portal. I'm going to let the AI improve my prompt here so it has a more complete picture of what to create. Otherwise, you might end up with something like these funky rainbow images. Okay, pretty cool. But let's bump the strength back up a bit to see if we can get it looking a little more like the reference image. Yep, that's a pretty good match. Moving on to Pose to Image, which focuses on recreating human poses from a reference image. This tool is great for tasks that require specific character positioning, such as animations or illustrations involving dynamic poses. It scans the reference image for human figures and replicates their poses in the generated image. While it's highly effective for straightforward poses, it may struggle with particularly complex ones. The best guidance images for this tool are those with clear human poses. This one is pretty straightforward, but I'll do a demonstration to show the difference between a basic pose and a complex pose. I've got some ballerinas here to help us. I'm going to start with this one here, which should be a simple enough pose for the AI to replicate. Let's turn her into a jazz dancer. I want to make sure the AI feels free to change her dress and style, so I'm lowering the guidance just a bit. Interesting. I'd say only one really matches because the other three are facing the wrong direction. Though the overall image is very similar to the pose, I think this is a successful result. Let's try with another ballerina though. This one here seems simple enough, but I think it might be too complex for the AI to replicate well. Let's give it a try. I'm going to leave it at 1 to try and get it to replicate the pose exactly. Okay, interesting. I would say in general the pose is spot on. Let's try again with less strength to see if the AI can figure out the image better. There we go, much better. Aside from some hand deformities, it's pretty spot on. And finally, let's talk about the character reference tool. A lot of people, including myself, are excited about this one because it helps you create any type of image while keeping a consistent main character. This tool does better with AI-generated subjects rather than images from external sources. To get the best results, provide a detailed description of what you want your subject to look like. For guidance images, use clear and detailed images of the character. Let's give it a try. First, we have to find a good image as a reference. I think one of these baseball players will do well. The tool works best with AI-generated human face images that are looking directly at the camera. We can change the guidance strength if we want, 
but I'm going to leave it at medium to give the AI some flexibility. Next, we'll describe what we want our scene to look like. I always like having the AI help me with my prompt to get better details. So you can see there are slight variations in the face, likely because we left it at medium, but overall the character looks very similar. Any one of these would work. Let's see if we can get it to use the face differently. I'm hoping to get him looking up and away from the camera instead of straight to it. There we go. Not too bad, it's definitely the same character and a few of these have him looking away from the camera as expected. But it still holds closely to the focus and composition of the guidance image. I want the character in a different position and perspective entirely. This is where we can start combining image guidance. I'll take this image of a guy hiking and use it as a pose I want our character in. I'll add our character back in as the character reference and use a simple prompt. Pretty cool. Definitely the same character, but now in a pose and position that's a lot different from the character reference. I could also change the style and other aspects this way. Let's see if this works as a content reference too. Yep, that's pretty cool. His clothing and gear match the content reference, but it's still our character from before. Finally, I want to try giving him different emotions. Let's see how the AI does with that. He currently looks so serious, or maybe thoughtful. How about we make him happy or excited? I'll enhance the prompt for this one too, so the AI has more description to work with. Nope. If anything, he looks sadder. Let's change the guidance strength and see if that makes a difference. Well, no. I'd say not. That's too bad. If you figured out how to change the character's emotions reliably, let me know in the comments below. That wraps up our in-depth look at Leonardo AI's image guidance tools. I hope this video has helped you with how to use these tools and shown you the incredible possibilities they offer for your projects. If you found this content helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Now that you have some awesome images generated, you might need to edit them with the final touches. Check out our tutorial on the Canvas Editor for guidance on how to use this amazing Leonardo AI tool. Thanks for watching.